Praise God. While, while they make their way out and some of the parents come back, I'm going to welcome our guest speaker this morning, Colin Chambers, our fellow South African. So he's got the twang, I'm afraid. You've got to put up with that this morning. <laughs> but uh, Colin's been here for many years and has been a faithful minister of the Lord and uh, much experience, much knowledge, as I said last week, pertaining to things end times, Israel. And, uh, uh, you know, we didn't tell Colin what to speak on. We want the Lord to lead him this morning. And I know he would have been praying. And uh, so I'm sure he'll share a little bit more about himself if, if you wanted to, Colin, but we really want to pray for him this morning. So, Lord, as you come on up, Colin, I just, Lord, I pray that you would bless our brother this morning, Lord. Strengthen him, particularly in his physical body as he heals from the accident, Lord. We just pray that you'd strengthen him. I pray your anointing to be upon him now, Lord, as he opens your word. May he just feel free and part of the family here to speak that which you've laid upon his heart. And Lord, would you anoint our ears to hear what it is you are saying through your servant today by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Give you that, Colin. You can stick on. I'll take that one away. Okay, you can put that. Stick it on there. That'll be all right. And then you can stick it on the pocket. Okay. Thanks. Oh, it's worked. Um, I was captain of warship in the South African Navy once, a small one, and I always battle with these things in different churches. <laughs> But God bless you, and nice to be with you. I think I was last here about five years ago or more, perhaps. Um, yeah, I was made in England, assembled in South Africa, and I'm back being recycled. Um, uh, my father was over for the war and married my mother over here. So when we grew up as children, uh, we had Granny England, which was my mother's mother, and Granny South Africa, who was my father's mother and talking to my sister on the phone the other day when she mentioned Granny South Africa, and it sounded so strange after all these years of doing that. But it's good to be back here, and the reason why I've sort of got this thing on still, and I was in Turkey, or I prefer to call it uh, Asia Minor, because that's what the Bible calls it, um, on a pilgrimage trip in January this year, and I took a tumble in Turkey. I was at Miletus where Paul said farewell to the Ephesian elders. And behind the amphitheater, if you've been there in that old restored village where Paul was one stage, I fell about two meters and broke the arm, top of the arm in seven places. And it's taken a long time to heal. But thank you for Richard um, coming down to Portsmouth and fetching me and bringing me up here early this morning because um, I'm not allowed to drive yet, but uh, I came to the Lord, I can't believe it actually, I really can't, we never can, in June 1973 when I was in the South African Navy. And when I look at it next year, that will have been 50 years, I can't believe that. I, I, I said once I still feel like a spring chicken and the person said, well, you look like an old boiled hen. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, uh, but anyway, uh, I've served the Lord for those years. An interesting journey in the Navy and then being a prison chaplain and had the privilege, as some of you know, of being Nelson Mandela's chaplain for 12 years and Robin Island. So it's very varied life. And, you know, in the Word of God, the best is always yet to come, which is a, a wonderful thing. And I, I want to share a little bit this morning about the raising of Lazarus from the dead. I want to talk about that particularly. I, I want to look at it from a slightly different angle, uh, how God solves a problem in your life. Is anyone here would like to raise their hand? You don't have to. You've never had a problem and got no problems. If there's any of them, go and enjoy a cup of tea in the meanwhile. But no, seriously, it's a very good way of doing it, looking at the story of how God raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was not resurrected. Only one person so far has ever been resurrected, and that was Jesus Christ. I say Lazarus was resuscitated because he came back in his old body and died again and is waiting to be resurrected uh, once again. And I said to people the other day in a Bible study, it was quite interesting, what's the greatest event that's ever happened on this planet? And some of them were thinking of ourselves and said, man landing on the moon. No, no, no. The greatest event on this planet was the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
be no greater event, and there will be no greater event until we too, as born-again believers, we sang about it earlier, when the trump sounds, the dead who in Christ will be caught up, and those who are living will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. In the blink of an eye, blink your eye, and that's how quickly we'll get our new resurrected bodies. I don't often shout at the television screen, but I did watching the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. Only at one point, she chose the reading, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. She chose the reading about the new resurrected body. The lady of the Commonwealth leader read that from 1 Corinthians uh, 15. And if you were watching on Sky News, I, I uh, don't have Sky, but I, I can watch it on free view, um, which, was, which was quite good. And Alistair Bruce gave a lovely commentary. And he said at one stage, she has gone to be with her Lord. And then he said something that I shouted, no, no, no. <laughs> He said, her body will lie in the coffin in St. George's Chapel for all eternity. It won't. St. George's Chapel won't be there for all eternity. There's a new heaven and a new earth coming. And when the trumpet sounds, she as a born-again believer will be resurrected in her new body uh, like the rest of us. And that will be a wonderful thing. All right, I said I wasn't going to go off any tangents, and I've gone off on one already. So let me um, just read a verse then, and we'll look through a little bit uh, of the raising of Lazarus from the dead with an eye on how Jesus uh, um, solves problems in our lives. But let's just say, uh, let's just pick out a reading here from it, um, where Jesus says in verse 25, and we'll come back to a few thoughts of that. Uh, in that chapter. If you've got your Bibles, keep your finger in John 11. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though he dies, or they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then he says, do you believe this? But I'll come back to that. Lord, I pray you bless your word to each one of our hearts now. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, John recorded seven times where Jesus said, I am something or other. Um, wonderful, wonderful statements. When Moses asked God, who are you? What shall I tell the people? He said, I am who I am. Very simple. And now Jesus says seven times, as John recorded, I am. Each with a, a wonderful promise and a very achievable uh, condition. We say uh, a lot of God's promises are conditional. Uh, God so loved the world that whosoever gives his life, there's the condition, will, will um, uh, not perish but have everlasting life. And these seven I am statements, and I mustn't go off on a tangent here uh, again, um, it's I am the bread of life, in John 6, uh, verse 35. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What a wonderful promise. I believe, spiritually speaking, uh, we're all thirsty for a meaning in life, and we're all hungry for a purpose in life. And Jesus says, come to me, believe in me, and you'll receive that. I also think he's speaking about provision. Because David said, I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous of the Lord forsaken nor his seed begging bread. And you know, folks, the media are hyping us up into hysteria about the cost of living crisis and we're not going to cope. In Jesus Christ, we will cope. He will see us through. We've been through crises before, and the media are terrible, stirring us up into this uh, almost hysteria about it. Um, and you know, Jesus said in the end times there'll be economic difficulties, there'll be famines, there'll be earthquakes, there'll be changes in the climate. <laughs> um, uh, we're not going to solve those, but he says when you see these things begin to happen, Look up, for your redemption is drawing near. 
Don't let these things get you down. Jesus is the bread of life. And you know, another place he says, uh, you would probably not be surprised, I've never physically had a baby. But um, those of you who have had babies, and they tell me this, is that as the birth of the child gets nearer, the birth pains get more intense. Am I right? Yes. Okay. I can't speak from experience, but I've heard a few yeses. And Jesus said that these things are like birth pains. And the more intense they get and the closer they get, the closer we're getting to the coming of the Lord. So look up for your redemption draws near. And um, the other I am, just to touch on them very quickly, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You see, it's come, believe, follow. And we, the future's pretty dark. But you know, Jesus has gone into the future and he says, follow me and you will never walk in darkness but have the light of life. And you know, in Psalm 119 it says, uh, your word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. What a wonderful one. The way ahead's lit, but the lamp unto our feet is that we walk day by day uh, in the light of the Lord. It's a day-by-day -day walk. The future's secure, but um, Jesus, we just have to follow him. He says, I'm the door or the gate. Whoever enters into me will find full salvation. Um, he says, the devil's come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come that you'll have my life, and life more abundantly. And you know, there's a door over there, very simple door, and that door has just two purposes. It lets me through and it keeps me out. I could write an essay about that door. I could discuss how they make glass, um, how the brass is, the brass is made, how the timber was treated and done. But you know, that's all interesting but useless as far as the door is concerned unless I walk through it. People can talk about Jesus, uh, as my late father would say, until the cows come home. But he need to enter through him. It's not to examine him like that. And the, Jesus said, I'm the door. Whoever enters through me will find salvation and eternal life and abundant life. He says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. He doesn't say they know about me. Do you know, interesting thing, knowing somebody. Uh, I, I, I can meet a lot of you with my left hand shake. I can give you a wet fish with the right hand. I couldn't even do that a while ago. But, and you go out of here and someone might mention my name and you'll say, yeah, I, I know Colin Chambers. Well, yes, you've met him. But you know, getting to know somebody is much more than that. You've got to meet the person. You can't meet the person if there's a problem. I can't meet Richard if I've been scandalizing him or doing all kinds of things. I've got to say, sorry, Richard, before I can meet him. And then I've got to meet him sometime along the line, shake hands or say, Ancana McKinnis or something like that. I still know a few Afrikaans words. Um, and then I've met him, and then I get to know him. And that spends time. And Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. We've got to meet him. Is there a problem? Yes, there is. There's my sin. We just remember Jesus died to pay for our sins. And so, Lord, forgive me my sins. That takes the barrier away. And then I meet him. I can't shake hands with him, left hand or right hand. But I can say, Lord, come into my life. I commit my life to you. I'm born again now. And that is how I meet the Lord. And I spend the rest of my earthly life getting to know him better and better. And you know when you get to know somebody the best? In times of difficulty and trials. And that's what it is with the Lord. And so graciously he allows us to go through times of difficulties and trials sometimes, often, or all times, I think, and so we can get to know him better. And when we know the Lord, we can say with David, the Lord is my shepherd. Or another tra no more modern translation. I have everything, everything, repeat everything I need. A wonderful statement. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I have everything that I need if I know him. Okay, and then I am the resurrection of life. I'll come to that now quickly. Uh, when Jesus was saying, I'm, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come back again and take you to be with me. He said, you know the way I'm going. And uh, Thomas, bless him, said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. Uh, after three years of teaching from the greatest teacher that's ever walked this earth, Thomas still didn't get it then. Uh, bless him. That encouragement for me anyway. Um, and Jesus said, it, almost as if, put it very practically, it's not time to go back through all the teaching. Thomas, I'll make it simple. This in the Bible is me paraphrasing. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Uh, what a wonderful I am statement. And the seventh one was uh, in uh, John chapter 15. Uh, I am the vine, remain in me, and I'll remain in you, and you'll produce much fruit. You know, fruit is effortless. If you've got an apple tree, as long as that branch stays connected uh, to the main stem, the sap will come up and the fruit will come. Cut that branch off and the fruit won't come. And it's so simple, so practical. Jesus said, well, I'm the main stem, you the branch, stay, remain in me, stay in that relationship with me, and you will produce much fruit. Wonderful thing to be fruitful in life. And uh, uh, I, I think, uh, I remember when I came to the Lord all those years ago, um, they were talking very much, uh, and one young Christian said to another, I remember this, uh, my memory is still quite good going back, must be 48 years now for this statement. Uh, the, brother, the person said, brother, you're judging me. And the person said, no, I'm not your judge, but I have the right to be a fruit inspector. <laughs> And that's a whole other tangent I could go off on to. Uh, a book that I hope to write, you filled with Jesus, where you are open for business, how to release the fruit of the Spirit that's in us. But um, uh, to be fruitful, just simply remain in Jesus. That's all. And that is so simple, but it's so practical. But let's go to Lazarus, who was resuscitated. Now, the background of the story, and to understand the story fully, and I will be quite quick, uh, I don't have to check your watches. I, I will bear that in mind. Um, sorry, I say that sometimes because you know, people sometimes they sort of try and look at them. <laughs> uh, I've been around the block and I've done it and I know it and I've done it myself, but okay. When they, Lazarus was sick, he didn't just have a cold, he was sick to the point of death. And when Jesus heard, he said very clearly in verse 4, this sickness will not end in death. It's for God's glory, so that God's Son will be glorified through it. Okay, the sickness will not unto death. So that we need to keep that just in mind for a moment or two. And Jesus delayed his staying. Lazarus died, and he was buried in the tomb. By the time Jesus got there, He'd been dead and buried for four days. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. Um, Martha came out to meet him, and Mary stayed at home. And I think Lazarus, Mary, and Martha were probably, they weren't disciples as such of Jesus. I think they were his closest friends on earth. I like to think that he relaxed at their house over weekends. Uh, Martha would have perhaps washed his tunic and his clothes. They were just good friends where he could lift up his feet, kick off his sandals, and relax with them for a short period of time. I'm imagining, but I try and make it very real uh, that we understand. And uh, they were good friends. And I think Martha came out to meet him, and she said, Lord, if you'd been here, our brother would not have died. Mary stayed at home, fell at Jesus' feet, and said the same thing, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. I think, and I might be wrong, and I'll apologize to her one day if I'm wrong, I think Martha was out there rebuking Jesus. 
Why weren't you here? Where were you? If you'd been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I read it. Mary, on the other hand, fell at his feet and said the same words, Lord, if you'd been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Uh, he couldn't have died if you were here because you always face these things head on. But that's by the by. But if you can, uh, Martha came out and met him uh, in verse 21, if you're following me, and she said, my brother would not have died. But then she says in verse 22, something very interesting. She says, but I know that even now, underline in your mind, even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Folks, her problem wasn't in the last day. Her problem was now. That's a wonderful statement from Martha. It proved that she was a believer because she believed in the resurrection on the last day, which the commentator on Sky News didn't believe in. <laughs> So I knew he wasn't a believer by that very statement that he made. So a wonderful statement Martha gave when she answered. But her problem wasn't in the last day. Her problem was now. And you know, folks, sometimes when our problem is now, we get on our spiritual tiptoes and say, but it'll all work out. But very often the Lord wants to deal, not it will all work out then, but he wants it to work out in the now. Are you with me? Okay, so the problem is now, what was Martha's problem? Come on, it's the easy one. It's a Sunday school one. What was Martha's problem? Okay, I'll help you. A dead brother. What's the answer to a dead brother? No, I think that's the answer. I think that's the cool result. Okay, I'll make a uh, problem, dead brother, answer, resurrection and life. Are you with me? What did Jesus say? I am the resurrection and the life. So what, if you follow that, Martha said, even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. And Martha said, I know in the last day, but her problem wasn't the last day, her problem was now. And the answer to her problem, which was a dead brother, is resurrection and life. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, I am the answer to your problem right now. Uh, the one who believes in me will live even though he dies, or they die. And whoever lives, in, lives by believing in me will never die. And then he said, do you believe this? And Martha beautifully sidestepped the question. She said, look what she said, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was come into the world. That wasn't the question Jesus asked her. A lovely answer, tremendous answer. When Peter said that on the mountain, Jesus was thrilled. He said, Who do people say I am? And some say Elijah raised from the dead, and some say this. And Jesus said, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are uh, the Christ, the Son of God, who's come into the world. And Jesus was thrilled. But he wasn't so thrilled with Martha. Do you notice that? He, uh, do you believe this? And she said, yes, Lord, I believe you, the Messiah, has come into the world. That's what Peter said. Um, but that wasn't the question Jesus asked. It was a wonderful answer. Do you believe that I'm the answer to your problem right now? Are you with me? And this is where I said, you've got a problem, and Jesus can meet that problem right now. She, Martha said, I know that even now. Martha said, the last days. Jesus said, I'm the answer to your problem. Do you believe this? And she didn't. That's pretty clear in what I've said. And I said, I'll apologize to Martha publicly on the day of the resurrection if I'm being harsh on her. Okay. And so Jesus didn't answer her then. He went into the house and Mary came out and said the same things. And basically, where do we pick it up? Um, Jesus said, where have you laid him? They can find that down in verse 34. There's not time to read the whole one. Where have you laid him? And come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. 
Another question, why did Jesus weep? Well, we don't know, let me say that right now. For Lazarus, never. He said the sickness is not unto death. He knew that Lazarus would be singing the hallelujah chorus, well, maybe, and it would be up and, re and resuscitated in a, in, a, in a few moments' time. So he wasn't weeping for Lazarus. Maybe he was weeping for coming face to face with the result of, of sin and suffering, which is death, okay, and seeing the human sorrow. But I think what Jesus was weeping about, and I might be wrong, but I think it's what causes Jesus, in a sense, still to weep today, was the unbelief of the believer. Amen. You see it right through here. Because why do I say that? And then the, some of them said, see how he loved him. But some said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? And Jesus, once more, verse 38, deeply moved, came to the tomb, deeply moved. Couldn't he do something? He'd come to do something. But they didn't believe it. And I've encapsulated Mary's story. And Jesus said, amazing. Take away the stone. Expose the problem to me. And in the King James Version, they said, uh, uh, we can't do that, he stinks. <laughs> Very basic English, that. He stinketh, maybe we're more King James English. My modern translation says there'll be a bad odor because he's been dead for four days as if Jesus didn't know that. Uh, we often tell Jesus things he knows, but that's fine. Talk to him. Don't get hung up on that. Just talk to him. Tell him things he knows, if you like, because that's building a relationship. And then Jesus said, this is very interesting. He said, take away the stone. Expose the problem to me. And uh, they said, we can't do that. We can't do that. That's basically what it says there. And Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you'd see the glory of God? And by believing in this case is to obey him and roll away the stone. That is very important. And uh, so they took away the stone. Now let me just run us into that and then I'll come to my conclusion and we can have a cup of tea. Um, the problem, a dead brother. The answer to a dead brother, resurrection and life. Jesus says, I'm the answer to your problem or whatever it is right now. Do you believe it? And then he says, where is the problem? And then he says, expose it to me. Now we've got to be brutally honest ourselves. Lord, the problem is in my... I don't want to give examples because I might be leading, I might give it one or two. Uh, the problem is my anger. Okay, expose that to me. And in men, anger is a hurt relationship. I'm actually hurting, Lord. Expose the problem to me. I can't go on that tangent. It's more in a hurting response for men. They hit out when you're angry. Um, the problem's in my marriage. Expose it to me. Where's the problem? You see what I'm trying to get at? I just want to leave those thoughts for you because how to deal with the problem. And expose it to me. You know what? You can expose anything you like to Jesus. He will not betray a confidence. I, it says confess your sins one to another. And I suppose if you really trust and know the people, that's all right. But be careful who you share your deepest problems with. You heard the story, I'm sure I'll say it very quickly. I won't embellish it. These four men had got together, ladies. I'm just using men for now. I'm, you could say four ladies got together. Ladies don't gossip, so four <laughs> men uh, got together. Um, and they thought, well, let's confess our problems to each other. And the first one, embellish it in your mind, said, well, you know, I'm an inveterate gambler, and I have to uh, steal and do all kinds of things to meet my gambling habits and embellish it all you like for time. I'm not going to. And Alice said, well, uh, you know, I'm... I'm an alcoholic uh, and a uh, drug addict and embellish it all you like. And the third one said, uh, I'm an adulterer. Horrors. Embellish it all you like. And the fourth one said, I'm a gossip and I can't wait to get out of this meeting. 
be careful, that's all I'm saying, how you share your deepest problems with other people. If you trust them, wonderful. But you can share them with Jesus. That's the point. Be honest with him. And, uh, and when they took away the stone, Jesus said, Father, I thank you. And he shouted in a loud voice that says, he didn't say, Lazarus, come out. He said, Lazarus! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was an officer in the Navy. He shouted, Lazarus, come out! And you know what? Imagine if you were there. This man came out in his grave clothes. Been dead for four days. The stench of death didn't come out, but life came out when Jesus went into it. And my closing thought, what did Jesus say? Release him, set him free. Oh, child of God, when people are set free, when they come to Jesus, don't bind them up with all kinds of rules and regulations. Set them free, because whom Christ sets free is free indeed. You know, I say this, and people, when I first say it until they think about it, um, uh, they disagree with me in their mind. If you love Jesus, you can do what you like, provided you really love Jesus. Because if you really love somebody, you're not going to willfully do something that they don't want you to do. I don't have to give you rules and regulations for that. You know. And if you do do something that upsets them, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And that's our relationship with Jesus. And I just think there at the end, you know, Jesus says, unbind him. Set him free. Oh, child of God, don't bind up new Christians. They're free in Jesus. You know, when I first became a, a Christian in South Africa, only Dion and Rene will know this statement, this term. I'll, I'll change it. You know, people gave a testimony. They said, if I don't dance, I don't drink, I don't go to the bioscope. <laughs> Bioscope's the cinema. I don't know if it's still called that. You know, don't give all the things you don't do. Give all the positive things. Because you put people under a, a bondage in that. But anyway, I've finished what I came, but I believe the Lord wanted me to share. But I'm just going to quickly and then pray and we can sing something or have coffee or tea or whatever. What's your problem right now? Right now, you don't have to shout it out. Please don't. You heard my, I might be a gossip. I hope I'm not. Um, what's your problem right now? What's the answer to that? And Jesus says, I am or can provide or be the answer to that. Where is it? Expose it to me, and I can come in and do something about it. Lord, thank you for your word, and I pray that God the Holy Spirit would make real what I've tried to share this morning. And anything I've shared that's irrelevant or wrong, please obliterate from our minds. But what is real and relevant and helpful, Lord, Lord God the Holy Spirit, won't you just reinforce it and make it real in our lives? that we can serve you as you want us to serve you, we can love you as you want us to love you, and we can rely on you as you want us to rely on you in every need, every problem, and every situation. Thank you for this time here with these dear folk, and, and bless our fellowship together now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and lovely to have been with you uh, this morning. Now I'll drop a hint, Dion, I'd love to come again sometime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
it will be all right. Amen. So let's stand together and then close in a song of worship. Amen. us today I'm sure and uh, the Lord is just calling on us I believe to come and expose the problem to him first and foremost to him and uh, he, he, he hears us when we call so Lord we thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy for this tender mercy merciful wonderful message that we heard today Lord we pray that we would just lay hold of that today Lord you know every problem that we have here today that is represented in this room today. Lord, and I can confess on my own part how often I'm like Martha and think, yes, then. But Lord, you want to deal with our problems now. 
And I know your question is going out to us today. Do we believe this? And I pray that, Lord, today we would respond in faith and so receive, Lord, your solution to our problem. Thank you, Lord. So I pray for each and every one of us today, Lord, that we would respond in the right way. Lord, for all those that are listening at home, Lord, all those perhaps here today that don't even know you, that today they would respond and turn their lives to you, and so be saved. Lord, we thank and praise you for this morning, and Lord, we just ask that you bless our time as we go, even to teas and coffees, Lord, that fellowship would continue, <coughs> church would continue, you would continue to work in and through us this day, Lord. Bless every conversation. Lord, I pray that you deliver us from speaking things that are not right in your sight but those things that are necessary for edification, for the building up of your church. Help us, my God, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. Please do come and share, Joel. Please, let's just hear what Joel's got to share. Thank you. Hi. Um, I was given this poem on my baptism, and just today I felt compared, compelled to bring it. Um, I think it is for the church. I think there's a lot of weary, tired, unwell people, people that have lost people, just so much happening. And this poem always gives me hope. It makes me cry, um, but it gives me hope. And I feel it fits in with today. Um, it's called Jesus Knows. Excuse my throat. Does he know when I am lonely? Yes, he knows. Does he know when I'm weary? Yes, he knows. Does he care when I'm tried? Can he see the hurt inside? There is nothing I can hide. Jesus knows. Does he know the time I've wasted? Yes, he knows. Does he know the wrong I've tasted? Yes, he knows. Does he really love me yet? Has he really paid my debt? Oh, I'm glad that since we met, Jesus knows. Does he know the load I'm bearing? Yes, he knows. Does he know when no one's caring? Yes, he knows. Does he care enough to heal? Yes, it's wonderful to feel Jesus knows. Jesus knows the road I travel, every mile. Jesus knows it every time, every trial. So I'll go to him in prayer. He will understand and care. In my joys and in my woes, Jesus knows. Does Jesus care? When my heart is pained to mirth and song, as the burdens press and the cares distress, and the way is weary and long. His heart is touched with my grief, when the days are weary, the long nights dreary. I know my Saviour cares. Does Jesus care when my way is dark, with a nameless dread and fear, as the daylight fades into deep night shades? Does he care enough to be near? Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary, the long nights dreary. I know my Saviour cares. Does Jesus know, does Jesus know, care when I've tried and failed to resist some temptation strong when for my deep grief I find no relief though the tears flow all night long? Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary, the long nights dreary. I know my Saviour cares. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? My sad, heart my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it all to him? Does he see? Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary, the long nights dreary. I know my Saviour cares. My child, you are special, so precious in my sight. I love you every moment of the day and of the night. I love our time together, the secrets that we share. So come and let me love you, for I am always there. Amen. Amen.